The SEC is charging Do Kwan, the fugitive founder of failed cryptocurrency Terra USD and Luna, with misleading investors who purchased billions of dollars worth of digital assets. That's right, Do Kwan, su currently subject to a global manhunt with Interpol in September, issuing a request for assistance to law enforcement agencies worldwide. That is from the Wall Street Journal. And today we're going to talk about do Kwan and why is he under a un, under alert or red alert or whatever why is why are they why are they why are the feds trying to go after them all over the world i just thought that it was an algorithmic stable coin that failed like they've all failed <laughs> an unbacked algorithmic stable coin sorry they've all failed so why? i mean it sucks that a lot of people lost money but why are we going after Do Kwan? well Turns out there's more to the story than we thought. He's not just some entrepreneur who created this thing that failed and it sucks for everyone who lost money, but we got to move on. No, actually, maybe there was some super shady stuff going on. I'll get into that. And Binance, BUSD, Paxos, they, I reported on them in the last couple of days. We know that Paxos served a Wells notice for the BUSD coin uh, to stop, which is a, uh, the stable coin used with that Binance was using. And Circle issues the USDC coin. Well, it turns out that they've been bumping heads and USD uh, Circle had snitched on Binance's use of BUSD. Did that lead to what we just saw in the Paxos being told to stop using it? I think so. I will get into that also. Don't forget, this is not financial advice. Use the links below to do your own research. If you need an accountant, you need a lawyer or a, or a financial advisor, then I suggest you go find one. All right. Welcome back to How About That Crypto, your home for crypto web three news and updates. I am your host, Bitcoin Stylist. And today we're talking about Do Kwan. Terra Luna, Terra Luna, and we're also talking about a little update for Binance, uh, the fight between Binance and Circle and what that means for the rest of us. All right, let's jump right in. I'm going to give you a little quick background of Terra Luna. Terra USD was a stable coin and it was it. It, tra it was in lockstep with Luna, and there was some sort of trading mechanism that enabled uh, the peg to be kept. And um, But it was an unbacked algorithmic stable coin. Uh, unbacked algorithms, algorithmic stable coins have not worked. So as far as I was concerned, it just didn't work. You know, it, so what? It's like, it sucks you lost money, but like, hey, this was a failed experiment. And it at, at some point that uh, Do Kwan said that they wanted to partially collateralize Luna by buying Bitcoin. So they they use Luna to buy Bitcoin, which may have caused them to depeg. And um, we also hear heard about some third party had stepped in to support their peg over a year ago before the collapse. And uh, well, when Bitcoin dropped, it caused a death spiral because it was artificially propped up in the first pace. Is this just another state failed stable coin? Or did, did the story I just gave you just now make you think, oh, maybe there's something skate shady going on? Well, let's jump in. I'm gonna use my use uh I'm gonna share my screen. So you can use links below to follow along if you're on listening on podcasts. All right. So here we go. We got a Wall Street Journal uh highlight of the news and the link will be in the description if you want to check it out. I'm just going to go over this real quick. It says that according to the SEC, Terra USD is a security and it, because it was supposed to maintain a peg and it could be exchanged for Luna. Maybe, I don't know. I mean, that doesn't really make any sense. It just says the SEC called it a large scale unregistered public distribution of Luna. So are they, are they saying that because uh, Terra and Luna swap between each other and Luna was a security and that was tied to the success of the stable coin. Maybe, maybe, uh, I don't know, but I'm sure we'll find out more as time goes on. And it says now Terraform labs, Mr. Kwan, this is, this is an interesting thing here. They claim that Chai, which is a popular Korean money transfer app. Think like Venmo was using it, using its Terra blockchain as supposed real world use case that attracted investors. So they're like going out saying, yo, we got real use cases. We're doing this thing. Well, it turns out according to the SEC that Chai payments were actually replicated onto the Terra blockchain, they didn't actually take place. So it wasn't actually a real use case. So that's fraud. 
if that's true. An unnamed third party propped up the price of Terra USD for a year after the algorithm stablecoin dropped below one dollar in May of 21. And it says as Terra USD returned to a dollar, Mr. Kwan in Terraform, they went around saying, "Look, see, it can maintain the peg." So they were lying there too because they didn't say that a third party stepped in. Now, if that's true, that's also fraud. After Terra USD Luna and Terraform crypto assets became essentially worthless by the end of May, remember the death spiral? And then what happened after that? The summer was so painful. It says that Terraform and Quan moved 10,000 of the Bitcoin that are supposed to collateralize and help maintain the peg. They moved it into financial institutions in Switzerland and have cashed out more than $300 million. So how do you feel about Mr. Do Kwan and Terra Luna now? I would say that if you don't feel ridiculously taken advantage of and frauded, then I would love to hear from you. All right, leave a comment below. Let me know what you think. And I'm moving on. Now, we got... The Binance, we got a Binance USDC Paxos Circle BUSD update. Yes, if you've been paying attention, you know exactly what I'm talking about. If you haven't, then here's a little quick update. Paxos was served with a Wells notice to stop issuing the BUSD because the SEC alleged it was a security. So Paxos said that it will no longer mint any new BUSD and they'll honor redemptions until February of next year. They also said they plan on uh, litigating this issue because they disagree with the SC that it is a security. Now, let's find out more about that. First, I think it's really important to point out that Circle, which issues a USDC stablecoin, there's a fight for stablecoin dominance, because think about it. If you have $50 billion and you buy treasury bonds and stick it in money market accounts and savings accounts and banks, which are very secure, and you're making 2 to 5% interest on $50 billion or $100 billion or $20 billion, that's a lot of money. And you don't need a massive, massive uh, operation for this. So you at the larger your market share gets, you get outsized returns relative to the cost of scaling up your business. So yeah, people want to be in the stablecoin business. They want to hold on to the assets, which also speaks to what I talked about yesterday with custody. Who wants to hold on to these assets? If you hold on to them, like there's money in that business right there. Okay. So this says here that uh, the New York Department of Financial Services ordered Paxos to stop issuing BUSD, which I told you. It also says that Circle, the issuer of the world's second largest stablecoin, noted that it warned the New York Department of Financial Services last year that Binance was mismanaging its reserves of BUSD. So that starts to explain something because it's not Paxos doing anything wrong. All they did was issue a stable coin. How can a stable coin be a security? If I, if I, you, if I tell you, Hey, I'll mint you a, a, a coin, one coin per dollar, and I'll hold on to your dollars. And then when you want your dollar back, you just got to give me the coin back. Boom. That's not a security. So now we're starting to get in. How are these secure, these stable coins being used now, whether or not this makes them a security would be some sort of different test than the Howey test that they're propping. But anyway, that's details, right? Although, you know, I love the details. As per the Bloomberg report, Circle alerted the watchdog last autumn, noting that its team had spotted blockchain data that showed that Binance didn't have enough reserves to support the issued tokens. Okay, so basically Binance was doing what FTX was doing with their FTT token and basically with all your other money, making you think that there was money there, but there wasn't. That's what this is saying right here. Okay, it says um, the this includes tokens like BUSD, Bitcoin Peg, Bitcoin, Ether, and other derivative coins designed to circulate on Binance's native network, BNB Smart Chain. Okay, so instead of using Ethereum or Cardano or Avalanche or Solana to build, they created the BNB Smart Chain so that they can have, have you building on their own chain. They're trying to create a monopoly, okay? I don't know why people like this Binance situation. I like op. I like I like um, 
I like choices. Like customers have to have choices and we don't like monopolies, not in this world of crypto. So if you're in the world of crypto and you like this monopoly blooming on Binance, then you do not belong here. Okay, period. Now let's keep moving. Uh, the news comes out hours after the New York Department of Financial Services asked Pasto to stop issuing the BUSD stablecoin, citing several unresolved related issues related to Paxos oversight of its relationship with Binance. So now they're saying you can't issue a coin and not police it. But the reality is you cannot police it. All right. So and I read a statement for to for you in one of my previous episodes that said Paxos said once we issue the coin, we can't we people we can't tell people what to do with it. It's like it's like issuing dollars and then saying, oh, but people are are going to the strip club and using their dollars and putting it in, you know, the panties of strippers or or, oh, that's not acceptable. Or it's like it's like, oh, people are using their dollars to gamble. So therefore, the Federal Reserve and gambling say gambling is illegal. I know it's not. I'm just giving you examples. Or let's just say I use the dollar. I mean, you get what I'm saying. It's like it's ridiculous to think that Paxos should be uh, should be punished for what Binance is doing. However, that's what they're saying. They're saying that it has to do with the relationship. It says Paxos failed to address key deficiencies requiring further department action, ordering Paxos to cease minting Paxos issued BUSD. The department is monitoring Paxos closely to verify that the company can facilitate redemptions in an orderly fashion. So, so it's not Paxos they're going after. This is totally going after Binance. That's what I think. Binance may not necessarily deny the claims from Circle. Last month in January, Binance also acknowledged that there were times when Binance peg BUSD was not fully backed, reporting reportedly $1 billion were missing from its reserves. What are they doing with all this money? Enriching themselves, okay? Lying to you. In its waning warning, Circle claimed that even the USDC was uncollateralized by Binance back then. As per the source contracted by Bloomberg, Binance once supported $1.7 billion worth of Binance Pay USDC by using USDC collateral only worth $100 million. So what they're doing is they're taking, they're taking USDC, they're wrapping it, and then they're putting on Binance, but they're not putting, they're putting more on the Binance chain, saying it's a circle coin or saying it's a Paxos BUSD coin, but it's really not because these coins are only native to ethereum and i think circle is on another blockchain but the paxos i'm pretty sure is only native to ethereum so if you want it on binance usdc you have to wrap it which means that they can create synthetic versions and we don't know what we find are finding out is that binance is not actually maintaining truth so now do you understand why i don't trust binance it says the latest enforcement on B Binance USD stablecoin could work in Circle's favor. Last September, crypto exchange Binance announced to delist USDC stablecoins in a direct attack on Circle. So there you go. It says that basically Binance resp is responding to Circle and saying that, hey, it's like you want to snitch on us? We're not going to use your coin. So, well, it turns out that it doesn't work that way because Binance was being super shady and now they're losing their their stable coin, which I think is a very good thing. Now, what does this mean? That this this basically translates into it's translates into what's happening now is CZ is now like their rumors are going around that they're looking at other stable coins. There's a Hong Kong stable dollar, Hong Kong dollar stable coin. There's also a Euro stable coin that we can expect to see. And uh, so then they're basically going to remove the largest crypto exchange in the world is going to remove the U.S. dollar out of their transactions. What do you think about that? Now, what can we do about it? I don't know. Uh, the reality is that, you know, this whole situation with Binance, I don't trust Binance. Binance can bring down to everybody. So what do you think? Let me know. Leave a comment below. I'd love to hear from you. All right. Have a good day. Hot on.